Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. The Lucha Brothers versus Private Party. I have a question for you guys. Sure. What would you call the opposite of Crash TV? Where there's 17 things happening every single week back in the, the Vince Russo days and they do it on Raw too. I guess when, when Russo was on Raw. Because there there's stories in AEW, but they you get so drawn out and nothing ever happens, nothing moves, that you forget about them. It's funny you bring this up because just a few, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks ago, it seems like they were behind Private Party and pushing them. And then now they're just not. They did a thing. Matt, Matt left, and so they had to be kind of reborn as their own act. You know what's funny is this is exactly how things were in WWE in 2019, where you would watch these three-hour Raws, yeah. and it was like, I've seen this match six times in the last three months. Yeah, that's fair. Like, we just keep seeing the same match over and over and over again. And it was it was just like, is there nothing else? Remember it was like that time where we'd watch WWE and it was like, do they have 40 people on the roster? Not even 40. That's probably giving right. it too much credit. Yeah. We used to always talk about this. Do they have 20 people on the roster? We see the same people in the same matches that go on forever, week after week after week. And now, you know, it's not like the same matches, but if you look at, like, you know, the conglomeration and the private party feud with... It's like, yeah, we do see some of these things, and they just go on and on and on. Well, yeah. Like, w Action Andretti and Top Flight. I've been seeing these guys having random six-mans for six months now. Yeah. <laughs> what has changed? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. I, I had my rant a week or two ago about the uh, the trios division and how there's there's two trios divisions: the one with the champions and whatever random thing they happen to be doing, and everything else. Mm -hmm. And the tag belts are the same way. I had to look this up because they're talking about how one of these teams may get a title shot, but first the acclaimed had to get their title shot because they're due one. Do you realize the Young Bucks won the vacant tag team championships in April? I thought you were going to say January. And have literally never defended them since. Wow. Oh, convenient. Three months? Where's Jack Tunney when we need him? The acclaimed got, they they won that eliminator match in June. Their tag title match is still hanging out in the air somewhere. Who knows what's going to happen? That's right. So we're, we're, the whole thing waits because the acclaimed are do a title shot and they, they won't take it and no one will give it to them. So we're all just sitting here with a thumb up our ass, just doing random shit. That's so. Or they're just ran, and, and, and Tony's like, well, whoever wins this match, whoever wins that Young Bucks acclaimed match, whenever it may happen, <laughs> 2026, who the fuck knows, one of these teams may get a title shot for that. Now, as for this match, had some ups and downs. When they just said, I'm going to do a cool move, that move looked cool. When they said, let's do a cool spot with lots of counters, they were often on very different pages, and their timing was often very, very much off. Crowd is very hot for a while. And the match went a couple of minutes after that. Lucha Brothers City, flurry of moves. They win with the fear factor. They get nothing. I like the match. The match is fine. That this is this is the story of AEW right now. It's a bunch of these shows that it's a bunch of good self contained matches. I enjoy them. I thought the opener on this show was great. I thought the main event was really good. I enjoyed the Suzuki match. Fine enough. The Statlander match was nothing. But, I mean, did I need to watch it? No. It's my job, so I watched it. But, you know, the show's doing okay. You know, it's doing fine enough that they're going to get a, a pretty good renewal here coming up pretty soon. But I think the, the issue is it, it could be doing a lot better. There's a lot of things that could be improved to make Rampage a more must-see show, to make Collision especially a more... Collision should be like SmackDown. You know what I'm saying? Should be like SmackDown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Instead, it's like Collision, which is Saturday night, bunch of matches. Yes. Whatever. You know, watch it on Saturday if you want or don't. But, you know, you never... SmackDown is an A show. Raw is an A show. You may think one is more important than the other, but because of the way they do the rosters and how they split up their biggest stars and put them on each show exclusively, you have two A shows. And right now we have Dynamite, that's the A show, and then we have, like, two C shows, basically, with just yep. things that happen. Yep. If you like wrestling and you like the wrestlers, it's fun enough to watch, but it is not, not must-see TV. No.
Yes, this main event was good. It held my attention. I didn't have any problems watching it, but I'm still trying to wait to see when top when these guys private party finish up their program with Chris Jericho. Cuz that's what they were involved with before all this. I don't get it. Yeah, they never good. put a button on that. Yeah. No, they need to uh they kind of do this with FTR and the Bang Bang Gang, but they don't need to have a draft and a hard split and say, this is the only place to see so-and-so. But you, as a viewer, when you watch Collision, you know you're not going to just watch the same guys who are on Dynamite or not even the guys who are not good enough to be on Dynamite. But it should have a, it should have a consistent roster from week to week, consistent programs from week to week that are not to set up matches on Dynamite or Rampage, but set, to set up matches on Collision. And pick one of your 15 champions and make it that the unofficial Collision Championship belt. And programs for that, that belt are built on Collision. And uh, make this match show seem important. Otherwise, it gets lost in the wash on Dynamite anyway. I uh, I think Vinny and I did a show one time, and I described Rampage as like a indie show. It doesn't really matter. Storylines don't really matter. It's just a bunch of guys wrestling other guys, and there's wins, there's losses, and everybody moves on with their life, and nobody is greatly affected. So that was Rampage. I mean... I watched it. I was we never talked really a lot bored. about that rampage show. Yeah, yeah. You got, still got forty minutes to go. We did, in fact, by popular demand, watch Ready to Rumble. The champion is some fat loser. Yeah, he's a completely talentless, no athletic ability, can't wrestle, it, broke bum that walked out on his wife and kid. But he and was he's over. the world champion. He and was, in the he, movie, the Well, yeah, but that's is, a microcosm of wrestling, sadly. Yes. He feels so bad about drinking this entire slushy that costs $1.26, and he, he sticks his finger in his asshole and walks up to the clerk. Lancey and, Lance is dying. How could the movie be so bad? I'm not going to fault the man for that, of all the things in the movie. I thought okay. for sure you were going to say you'd done this before. There's a reason I'm not going to fault the man for that. I, I just think with all the porta potties and farting in this, that I think Vince McMahon was a secret uh, producer on this film. Had to have been. So then we get the the Shermanator. He's playing a WCW arcade game. He uses some internet sleuthing to find the personal information of Jimmy King. He's searching the internet. Can find out anything on here. This movie is so antiquated. Every Nitro Girl is in a Nitro Girl outfit, except for this girl. And they had they her dance in something to totally out, different. Brian, like the captain. So we're so stupid. I got it. Captain yes, Stabbing? Yes, if you're watching this film, you're that stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also insulted by the fact they hired Michael Buffer to announce the Royal Bash, the fake-ass Royal Bash. $24 million budget. Wow. And probably 500000 of that went to Michael Buffer. It made twelve. You know, we he should unveils. mention, this This cage match is the triple-decker cage of doom. Everybody buried it. It was horrible. Everybody hated it. And, uh, and so they decided to make a movie. And what is the final battle? It's another goddamn triple-decker cage match. This would be like in, in 2010 if, like, TNA made a movie and the final the final match was a reverse battle royal. They throw powder in someone's face, DDP's, I think, or somebody's, and the dude just looks at it and goes, it doesn't work. And it's like, of course, because wrestling's fake and stupid. Should we just end it there? What a, what a sound bite. There has never been a movie I have watched in my entire life which has made me hate myself more. Wow. I'm ashamed that I'm even in the place at 41 years old where I would end up reviewing this movie for money. I would have thought I would have made it out of here by now. You know what I mean? I'm done. Well, everyone, hopefully we can do this again someday. Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe.